Okay, I'm continuing to solve problems that I think are cool. Um, I'm actually, I remember seeing this one before, uh, but then I saw it on, again, on Reddit, because, you know, I'm just wasting time. Uh, so I'm going to solve this problem. Let's just look at it. It says uh, the one kilogram ball, because that's one kilogram, uh, is shown below rotating around the pole at 60 RPM. So it's going around this way. And I think these are both just strings. The tension in the top rope is closest to, okay. <clears throat> so there's a bunch of stuff going on here that makes this more complicated than it needs to be, but that's fine. Uh, so let's just, let's just do this. Let's just draw a force diagram on this ball. Number one, we have the gravitational force pulling down. Now I have two ropes. It says rope, okay. To one kilogram ball, this would be pretty heavy. Um, and the one thing about ropes is that they can only pull and they can only pull in the direction of the rope. So I have this right here, I'll call that T1 and this right here, T2. Now, the tension in the top row, it, I don't think these are the same rope, right? Because if, if it like looped through there, then the tension would have to be the same. But they, they're different ropes attached to different things, so they can have different magnitudes. So I have three forces on this, and then I have, uh, let's call this the X direction, and this the Y direction. And the motion of the ball is such that its acceleration in the x direction is this way, right? I have AC equals omega squared times R, and then the acceleration in the vertical direction is zero. So the first thing I need to do, I'm gonna find, is this angle theta right there. So if I have this triangle, then I know the hypotenuse is one and the opposite side is 0.5. So theta, so I can say, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse 0 0.5. So I, I know I know the, the value of theta, even if I don't write that down. Okay, so I know theta. Uh, I can just start plugging in stuff. So let's just let's just go over here and say F net Y equals zero. The net force in the Y direction is zero. So what forces do I have? Let me redraw my diagram over here. So I have MG I have T1, I have T2, and both of those are at an angle theta above and below. T, I'll call that T2, that's T2, T1, and that's G. So in the Y direction, I have zero, then the Y component of T2 is gonna be T2 sine theta, which I know is 0.5, I didn't even find that angle, see, and minus T1, sine theta because it has the same the same angle minus mg so i don't know t1 and t2 but i do know i can write this as 0 0.5 t2 minus 0 0.5 t1 minus mg equals zero so that's that's an equation i have two variables i don't know and that's fine now let's look at the y direction i mean the x direction so f net x is going to be equal to, now in this case I have uh, a horizontal component of T2, which is going to be T2 negative T2 cosine theta, which I can write in just a second, I don't really care, uh, minus T1 cosine theta. And those are the only two forces, and that's going to be equal to negative M omega squared R. Okay, so the cosine of theta, I guess I should write this as, I can, there's a couple things I could do. I could just find theta as a number and that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so theta is sine inverse of 0 0.5. Let's just do that, that'll be easier. Then I'll take the cosine of it. You could also use the uh, Pythagorean theorem and find the length of this and then find the cosine that way, but it doesn't really matter. Now for R, it's this distance. Oh, so I guess I kind of do need to find that distance. So r is going to be equal to the square root of 1, 1 squared, minus 0 0.5 squared. And I should know that. I don't know why. Let's put it in the calculator. So I get the square root of 1 minus 0 0.5 squared, close parentheses, equals 
So I get, what's that? 0 0.87. Yeah, that's fine. So that means the cosine, I can go ahead and write cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is also 0 0.87. That's kind of nice. Okay. That's meters, actually. Yeah. That's not, because I divided by 1 meter. It's 0.87 meters divided by 1 meter. Now I'll just need to get one more thing. And so I have R, and you'll notice that that's the same as cosine theta. So I actually get negative T2 minus T1 equals negative M omega squared. Numerically. Numerically. Okay. I shouldn't, I shouldn't put that. I did. Let's just say times one meter. There. Now it works. <laughs> okay. Now I do know that omega, it says 60 RPM. And so omega equals 60 revolutions per minute. But I need omega in radians per second. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 pi radians per 1 revolution. And that cancels. And then I'm going to multiply this by <clears throat> 1 minute divided by 60 seconds. And then the minutes cancel. So now I have omega. Oh, the 60 cancels too. So omega is 2 pi radians per second. That's easy. So now I know omega. I know that. So I have two equations, two unknowns. Here are my two equations. Um, let's go ahead and solve this one for T1. And then I'll plug in up there. So T1 is going to be equal to, I can multiply both sides by a negative 1. So T1 is going to be equal to M omega squared times 1 minus T2. <clears throat> now I can put that in up here, and I get uh, 0 0.5 T2 minus 0 0.5 times T1, which is going to be 0 0.5 M omega squared 1 minus 0 0.5 T2 equals 0. Oh, bad stuff happened. Because T2 is going to cancel. What did I do wrong? Okay, that's... Oh, minus... This is 0.52 minus a negative. So that's true right there. That's true. That's right. I missed that right there. Okay. So now I get... I add these two together. I get... T2 is going to be equal to 0 0.5 m omega squared times 1. So that's going to be, let's put that in our calculator. What was the mass? 1 kilogram? Oh, 1 times 0.5 times 2 pi squared. Okay, so let's put it in the calculator. So I get uh, 0.5 times parentheses 2 times pi, close parentheses, squared and I get 19.7 newtons and if you look over here that'd be B closest to B okay um, the the fun thing about this problem is that uh, this tension pulls up that tension pulls down uh, if it goes too slow if you don't have tension, a positive tension in this, it could go so slow that the tension T1 could be negative, right? T, if, if omega is very small, then uh, this T2 value is going to be bigger and T1 is going to be negative, which means that this tension actually pushes that way. And it can't do that because it's a string. But imagine that I had like a stick there. You know, this is the same situation as a clacky ball, right? They're, they have these little balls that swing around, and they're held out by these sticks. But a stick can push. A string cannot. So at a certain speed, if it's going too slow, it would just fall down. And that makes sense. Okay. So maybe it wasn't the best problem, but it was still a little fun. And as long as I have a little bit of fun, that's fine with me.